Hello students, welcome to the session on RRBJE preparation. Okay, today we are going to discuss subject named information systems. Before discussing the content of the subject, let me tell you something. This subject is not so popular compared to other subjects. Why? Because whatever the subject listed in the RRBJE syllabus, there are 14 subjects, all of them are more or less part of gate syllabus, almost all of them. But this information is not part of gate syllabus or not part of syllabus of any other competitive examinations. Very few exams are including this subject. So, there is very less chances that you will get some relevant content for preparation regarding this subject. Hope my point is clear for you, what I am trying to say. Because this subject is not included in most of the competitive exams, the content related to this subject is not available on the uh, websites or books. Fine. So, whoever following the live session or whoever see the, watch this record, I strongly recommend you to suggest this uh, video to other friends who are preparing for this subject. Because it really helps them. Because whatever the content I am providing in this video session and whatever the content that is being recorded in RRBJE course of AS Academy, that is really helpful because we have spent so much time to prepare that content. Okay. So, and let me tell you one more subject, uh, one more point about this subject. Similar to basics of computer knowledge subject, this information system is also helpful for non-computer science students also. Let me tell you how. Whatever the content we are going to discuss regarding this subject, that is, no, that is more non-technical. That is more non-technical. What do I mean by this? Okay. See, whatever the terminology we are using, that may be related to computer science. But the applications of this information systems are not specific to computer science only. The applications of inform information systems are not specific to computer science only. So, what I am trying to say, if you are a paper setter, if you want to give some questions from computer science, since the applications are generic, not specific to computer science, whatever the questions you can make from this information systems, that can come in computer science paper also, non-computer science paper also. Because the applications and genericness of the information systems is very huge. Fine? So, my point, I, have, I hope my points are clear for you. The first point is, this is not so popular. You cannot find the content. You can find the content in very less places. The second point is, even though this is specific to computer science, whatever the content we are going to discuss here, that may help non-computer science students also because the applications of information systems is very generic. Fine? So, let us see what are the major topics that are mentioned in the syllabus of RRBJE in this subject. Fine? The first topic is introduction. Second topic is hardware. Third topic is software. Fourth topic is communications. And fifth topic is e-commerce. Okay? Before going to discuss introduction and e-commerce, let me tell you something about this part. This hardware and software part of syllabus, fine? This hardware and software part of syllabus is being covered in basics of computer knowledge subject already. And one more thing, whatever the computer science subject you study, that knowledge is enough to answer questions from this topic, hardware and software. Okay? Still, we have discussed some relevant content in the basics of computer knowledge subject reg uh, regarding these two topics. And coming to communications, in the syllabus sheet, they have mentioned like, whatever we have communication networks. If you see RRBJE syllabus, or if you are, from a, com uh, if you are a computer science graduate, if you have studied computer networks in your graduation or data communication networks in, in your graduation, questions from this topic are very easy. You can easily answer them. So what I am trying to say, hardware and software and communications related content is covered in other subjects. I am repeating this point again. Whatever the content and questions that, occur, uh, that will appear from hardware, software and communications will be covered in other subjects. But what is the definition of information system? How you classify information systems? And what is the definition of e-commerce? What is the content related to e-commerce? This is not covered in any other subject. Fine. So in this slide, I try to focus on introduction and e-commerce. If we find enough time, then I start uh, teaching about hardware, software, and communications also. I'm repeating this point again. Here, my strategy is very clear. We have five topics. Out of this, these three topics can be covered in some other subjects. What is the unique content that is appearing in this subject? One is introduction, another one is e-commerce. So whatever the content that is, uh, that is related to introduction of information systems and e-commerce, these two topics will be discussed in, the in, the, in this session. 
as a priority. If I find some time, I'll try to explain hardware, software, and communication related questions also. Fine. Hope you have a clarity what we are going to learn, this, learn in this session. And our strategy is very, very simple while learning any, any topic. Let me show you. First, we'll go through the previous year questions. Because of this activity, you will understand. See, see the previous slide. In the previous slide, they have mentioned like e-commerce. But what are the subtopics I need to cover under this e-commerce that you don't know? They have mentioned something like introduction. What do they mean by introduction? What are the subtopics I need to learn in introduction? After solving previous year questions, you will understand some major topics. Let us say topic number M1, M2, M3. After going to previous year questions, what you will understand? You will understand something like, okay, these are the three major topics that are being asked from this introduction part. Then you will go through the previous year questions of e-commerce. Here also you will list out the topics, okay? Major topic one, topic two, topic three, fine? In this way, you will try to understand after analyzing the previous year questions, what you will understand, what are the areas to be covered or what are the areas to be understand, okay? Understand the areas to be focused in the syllabus. The syllabus is not specific. It is so generic. They are mentioning in single word. What does the single word means or what does the single word expect you to uh, uh, learn? That you, will get, that you will get to know after going through previous year questions. Then, collect the relevant content and practice. I hope my strategy is clear for you. What we will do? We will go through the previous year questions of each subtopic. We will understand the subtopics or major top topics need to be focused. Then we we'll list the topics and we, re we collect some relevant content related to the topic and we will practice those contents. Hope this point is clear for you. Now let us start this technique with the first topic that is introduction of information systems. What is our first step? We will go through the, what is our first step? We will go through the previous year questions. Let us look at this question. Which of the following is a storage device that is rigid, permanently installed magnetic disk to store data or information? Fine. So, if you see, observe this, permanent disk is not a popular name at all. It doesn't have any specific meaning. Okay. You can ignore this option. Then, floppy disk. Okay. If you observe here, the word rigid, floppy is a very thin disk. Floppy is a very thin disk. The physical feature of floppy disk is thin in nature. But what they are mentioning? Rigid. So because of the rigid word, I am excluding floppy, floppy disk option. Now, what is the other option? Hard disk. This is the answer for this question. So what I'm trying to, what I'm trying you to understand, in this question, they have mentioned some storage device. So permanent disk is not any specific name. There is no popular, uh, there is no, uh, there is no nothing specific to this permanent disk. So you can ignore that option. What is the other option? Hard disk and floppy disk. Because of this word rigid, you can exclude floppy disk because floppy disk is not rigid. It is very thin. What is the other option? Hard disk. Whatever the features they have mentioned in this hard disk, you can observe all these features in uh, this hard disk. So hard disk is the answer. And let me tell you something. While answering this question, answering hard disk is not enough. Okay. And let me tell you something. If you observe pattern in the RRBJE uh, previous year questions, in very rare cases, they repeat the question. In very rare cases, they repeat the question. What do they do? Next time, they will ask question about floppy disk. In the definition place, instead of giving this rigid or something, they will give thin or something. Okay. So you need to understand, while solving previous year questions of RRB, it is this technique is specific to RRBJE. Other exams may have may follow some other pattern, like they repeat the same question or something. But what I observed in this RRBJE previous year questions, they are not repeating the same question, but they are repeating the question from the same topic. Hope my point is clear for you. I'm repeating this again. They are not repeating the same question, but they are repeating the questions from the same topic. So this year they have uh, they have asked question related to hard disk. So try to explore definitions of other options also. Then only you will be able to answer of next year questions. Fine. Let us go to next question. Okay. A computer based information system is needed because Okay, what they are asking, why do we need computer-based information systems? Let us understand each and every option and try to understand whether it can be the reason or not. Okay, the size of organization has become large and data is massive. This is one genuine reason. When the data is mass ma massive, if, ma if mankind has to operate on that data, it may take more time or we can make human errors. But if you take help from uh, computer-based information systems, then it will help to 
increase the accuracy and speed fine so option a is very relevant then timely decisions are to be taken based on available data i already told you we can increase the speed of decision so timely decision can be taken so b is also one relevant uh, reason to make use of computer based information systems then computers are available this is a very funny reason just because computers are available just because computers are available you cannot make use of computers when they are not needed let us say if you just want to arrange the data of 10 people you can do it with the human kind only why to involve computers there hope you understood my point just because computers are available you cannot make use of computers so this is not so valid reason fine then difficult to get clerks to process data this is also not not so valid reason so a and b are very logical and valid reasons so which option is saying a and b option b is saying a and b fine so if you observe here whatever the question they are asking even though it involves some word computer like words it is so non technical in nature that's what i'm trying to say because of the applications and genericness of in the genericness of the uh, information systems even non computer students may get questions from this subject because every competitor is expecting some basic computer knowledge from each and every graduate fine then which segment okay this is related to uh, uh, so this is part of introduction okay this is part of introduction of information systems so here they are focusing on usage of the information system or applications of the in information system then look at this question i told you the major the other major topic from information systems is e-commerce so this is related to e-commerce which segment do flipkart amazon ebay belong to okay let me explain these options first B2G is short form of business to government. B2G is short form of business to government. C2C is short form of consumer to consumer. I am giving you the full forms first, then you can understand on which category these companies will fall b2b is short form of business to business then b2c is short form of business to consumer fine if you see here all the companies what they have mentioned flipkart amazon ebay in all these companies the major transaction is done between business to customers we will have some companies they give services to some customers so whatever the companies they have mentioned all of them are b2c category because they provide the businesses or companies provide services for consumers or customers okay if you see here business to government or consumer to consumer here you will take the example of olx here both seller and buyer both are consumers only if you take olx or any uh, any similar website to olx in 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 that website both consumers and buyers and sellers are consumers but in case of flipkart uh, buyers are consumers but sellers are business fine hope this point is clear for you now what is what do i mean by practice here whenever you see this kind of question you need to list out what are the companies that fall under business to government category what are the companies that fall under consumer to consumer category what are the all companies that fall under business to business category what are the all companies that fall under business to consumer category hope this point is clear for you what do you mean by practice here just remembering that these companies will fall under b2c category doesn't help you in the coming examinations okay what is the practice when you see these kind of questions you need to list out all the companies which fall under each category hope this point is clear for you let us go to the next question then which of the following is part of e-commerce in the previous slide i have already show, uh, to, uh, shown you b2b is one category b2c is another category c2c is one category so what are those business to business business to consumer consumer to consumer when you involve government in the picture then government to consumer government to government and government to business 
these will also come into the category. So these are all the things that are part of e-commerce. If you observe here, they have mentioned B2B, this is part, this is part of e-commerce, B2C, this is part of e-commerce, B2G, this is also part of e-commerce. So all of these is the answer for this question. Hope this point is clear for you. So what you need to understand here, in the previous question, you understood something like there are six categories based on the buyers and sellers. If buyers and sellers both are business, then the, uh, then the e commerce is B2B. If the buyer is business, but the, uh, but the seller is consumer, sorry, sorry. If the uh, seller is business, but the buyer is consumer, then it is B2C. When both buyer and seller are consumer, then it is C2C. If you involve government instead of consumer and business, then we have G2C, G2G, G2B. So what I, what, want, what I want you to understand, in the e-commerce, the major topic is two, two things. One is, what are the different categories under e-commerce? That is this. And one more question you need to understand, what companies fall under B2B? What companies fall under B2C? What companies fall under C2C? What companies fall under G2C? And what companies fall under G2G? And what companies fall under G2B? These are the content you need to learn from this subject. Okay. So after uh, solving three questions, I understood these things. What is, what is the first thing? We need to understand the applications of information systems. That is the thing we have learned in the first question. After solving other two questions, we need to understand there are some subcategories in e-commerce. What are the different companies that falls under each category? If you learn these things, next year you may ask one of the question in the exam. Fine? Then, which of the following statement is not true? Okay, here they are talking about the definition of the information. So, if you see, the information system has two, two generic words. One is information, another one is system. So, they may focus on definition of information and definition of the system. What are the different in entities involved in the system? That is one interest. Another interest is how data is different from information. What are the salient features of the information? When do you call data as the information? Or how do you convert data into information? These are the different interests coming under this introduction topic. Fine. So if you see here, let us understand the definition of information and try to answer this question. Information is nothing but processed data. This is true. Just understand this, th this thing. We will collect some raw data. What do we do? We will collect some raw data. Okay. Then we will process that raw data and we will create some information. This is how we collect the, this is how we generate the information. Okay, so what do I mean by this? Generally, we collect some raw data. Let us say we have collected marks of different students. Then, to analyze the performance of the institute, what will we do? We will take average of the all the marks. Whatever the average we are taking, that will be considered as information. I am repeating this example again. Raw data is nothing but unstructured data. Fine. We will process that raw data to generate the information. So. Since this statement is true, whatever, whatever they have mentioned in the statement A is true. But they are interested in false statement because they are asking for which of the statement, which of the following statement is not true. Fine? Then the second statement is information can be used to resolve uncertainty. This is also true. If you have more, more information, you will be more certain. You cannot commit mistakes if you have more information. So option B is also true. Information cannot be encoded. This is false. Why? Whenever you type something in the keyboard, you are thinking you are typing some English letters. But system cannot understand English or any human readable language. It converts everything into, converts in the sense it encodes everything into binary. So without encoding the information, computers cannot process it. So what you need to understand? Encoding of information is must. We cannot avoid encoding of information. So this statement is false. Let us look at the next statement also. Information can be encrypted for safe storage and communication. This is true. What do you mean by encry encryption? We will convert the information into unreadable text so that we can maintain secrecy of the information. Whoever is the intended receiver, he can decrypt it to read the actual message. Except the receiver, no one else can uh, read that information. So this statement is also true. So here if you understand, here they are focusing on definition of the information and they are also interested whether you know the difference between raw data and information or not. Hope this point is clear for you. So in the first question, what we have re realized, what is the essence of information, information systems. In the second and third questions, what we have learnt, we have learnt there are some subcategories in e-commerce and we need to list out all the companies which fall, which fall under each subcategory. In the fourth question, we understood they are also focusing on 
definition of information and how data is different from information. These are the points they are interested in. Then the accounting system. Now here they are interested in type of information systems. Here they are interested in type of information systems. Fine. So the accounting system. So accounting system involves some numbers. It can be related to salaries. It can be related to marks or anything. We will maintain accounts. Mostly they are related to salaries only because the word accounting is related to money. Will you be okay if someone says you may get 70,000 this month, you may get 60,000 next month. So it cannot be probabilistic. I am repeating this point again. Accounting system cannot be probabilistic. It is saying like with a 90 percent of probability you will get the salary. Will you accept it? No. So accounting system cannot be probabilistic. Then possibilistic system. Here they do not talk about percentage also. They simply say you may get or you may not get. You may get or you may not get. So you do not accept in case of accounting system. So this is also false. Closed system is not related to uh, information systems at all. So you can ignore it. And coming to deterministic system, what do you mean by deterministic? There is a action and corresponding consequence. Okay. If you work 20 days, you will get the salary of 20 days. If you work 30 days, you will get the salary of 30 days. So this decision can be taken by deterministic system. So accounting system can be deterministic system. Okay. But while answering this question, this is not the only practice that is enough. For, that is enough. I'll uh, I'll tell you how to make this practice more rigorous. Simple. Just take the term probabilistic system and try to list out all the systems, all the information systems which fall under probabilistic system category. Same thing with possibilistic system also. Try to take the information systems that fall under the possibilistic system category. Hope this point is clear for you. What I am trying to say, our preparation should be very rigorous. How can we make it rigorous? Technique is very simple. When you see one question related to type of information systems, answering accounting system is a deterministic system is not enough for your preparation. What should be your preparation? What are the other options? And what are the different information systems falls under these all other options? That will make your preparations more rigorous. Fine. Let us go to next question. Wholesalers selling to retailers. If you observe here, wholesalers are related to business entities. Retailers also business entities. So here both buyer and seller are business. So it comes under B2B category. Fine. Then next time they may ask an individual, an individual buying a mobile from some e-commerce website like Flipkart. So this time they have asked something like both buyers and sellers are business. But next time they may ask some question like this individual person buying a mobile from Flipkart. Here the buyer is sorry here the buyer is customer but the seller is business. So it is B2C category. So what I am trying you to uh, what I am trying to say here answering while answering this question you can ignore this question after looking at okay wholesalers is business retailers is business but that is not enough for the preparation what you need to understand okay if they want to make b2c as the answer what can be the question they can prepare then you can prepare these questions if you think like this your preparation is going in a good direction fine then which of the following is not a benefit a benefit of e-commerce okay so till now what you understood they were interested in different e-commerce e concepts like B2C, B2B and C2C. When government involved, there are three more e-commerce e e categories. Now, they were talking about benefit or advantages of e-commerce. So, they want you to learn advantages of e-commerce also. Okay. So, let us uh, explore each and every option. Fast process, this is true because when e-commerce is not involved, you need to go to the store and you need to buy the item and you need to transport, transport it by yourself. So it was time consuming process. When you involve e-commerce in the buying process, purchase process, then the fastest will be, pro the, the process will be faster. 
So it is a benefit, but they are interested in not a benefit. They are not interested in benefits. What is the second option? Always on. This is also true. If you go for your offline shop, there are high chances that in the night times or not non-working hours, they can be closed. But coming to e-commerce, the servers will be always on. So you can purchase whenever you want. So this is also true. Then inconvenience. This is a disadvantage. So actually, convenience will be created by e-commerce. But they are saying inconvenience. So convenience is the advantage or benefit of e-commerce, but they are pointing inconvenience here. So this is wrong. This is not benefit of, actually it is not a benefit first of all. Inconvenience, inconvenience is not a benefit, benefit first of all. Inconvenience, inconvenience is a not benefit and e-commerce doesn't create inconvenience. So this is the answer for this question. Reduced cost price, this is also true. So since they are asking about not a benefit, we need to point to inconvenience, fine. So my point is very simple. These are the not only things, see since they can give only four options, they have mentioned three right answers and one wrong answers here. So what should be your practice? Just go through any source and try to recollect what are the all advantages of e-commerce and what are the all disadvantages of e-commerce. This should be your strategy. And let me tell you, if you can uh, enroll for RRBJE, uh, Ace Academy course launched by RRBJE, whatever the content relevant to this e-commerce topic, I already told you in the information systems, Two things are being covered in this information systems alone. One is introduction of information systems and type of information systems. And another one is e-commerce related content. Whatever the content that is relevant to this e-commerce and type of information systems that we have made uh, some uh, uh, videos, with some kind, uh, videos with some good content, it will help you in your preparation. Because if you want to collect information from different resources, that will take so much time, right? If you can enroll for a, any structured course, it will fasten your uh, preparation, fine? Then, which of the following activities is offered online by airline services? This is what I am telling you. Airline services is a very generic application. It is not related to computer science itself. So this question can be asked for non-computer science graduates also because it is not specific to computer science here. Even though information systems is computer science subject, just look at the nature of this question. This airline services is a very generic application. Okay, so there are chances that even non-computer science graduates may get questions from this topic. Okay, let us answer this question. Seed selection, booking, automated flight status, and all of the options. Okay, so is the airline services is the only thing that involves information system? Recently, you can see book my show like applications. Book my show like applications where you can book the movie tickets. Next year, they may ask these kind of questions also. Or you can say Google Pay, like G Pay, Phone Pay kind of applications where you can transact the money. Or they may ask purchase websites like Amazon, Flipkart, all these things. So what I'm trying you trying you to understand here, this year they have asked questions from airline services, but next year they may ask questions from other uh, information system applications. Okay, try to explore all the information system applications. And what is the other point? This, even though this question is from information system subject, since the nature of question is very generic, even non-computer science students may also get this question. Hope this point is clear for you. We'll go to the next question. Search engines are used to search dash type of information. Okay, if you see any search engine that is launched by Google or Microsoft, any search engine, can we search documents? Yes, we can search documents. Can we search videos? Yes, we can search videos. Can we search images? We can search images also, fine. So all of the options is the answer, okay? Fine. Now, if they want to go in depth, they may ask you some question like this. What is the Google application? I'm preparing this question. What is the Google application that help you to search through images? I'm not saying that we are searching images. We are giving input as image. Search through images or search where images are inputs. Here, here my output is not image, search using images. Do you know the answer for this question? My question is very simple. There is a Google application that takes image as the input and that will search for that image. Here I am not searching for the image. Here I am extracting some content from the image and based on the content I am going to perform the search. 
the answer is google lens so google lens is a application which takes image as the input and gives some relevant output hope this point is clear for you if you understand what i am trying to do here here they have asked some question about search engines so how i am going how i am uh, doing the preparation here so you can answer this question by ma marking all of the options as the answer but here you need to understand okay if i want to search videos can i give video as the input if i want to search images can i can i give input as the image if the in this direction you, you try to explore then you will get to know there is a application called google lens which takes image as the input and gives the relevant output hope this point is clear for you we are going to the next question a dash is a systematic way of organizing and accessing data okay so this is data structure okay information system to store the data it may involve different data structures okay in the coming slides i'll try to explain you what is the definition of information system and what are the different entities involved in the different system the information system and what are the different types of information system i'm repeating it again what, what will what will we learn one is definition of information system another one is different entities involved in the information system and the another one is type of information systems okay these are the three things that we need to cover in introduction part okay hope this point is clear for you and if you remember in the e-commerce part after exploring these questions we understood these things there are different types of e-commerce b2b b2c like this what are the different type of e-commerce and what are the advantages of e-commerce and we may be interested in disadvantages also because if they ask questions from advantage this year next year they may ask questions from disadvantage also so based on our strategy what we did we have gone through previous year questions then we understood from the introduction part of the syllabus they are focusing on three things different definitions involved in the information systems and different entities involved in the information systems and they are also interested in what are the different types of information systems hope this point is clear for you after going through pre previous year questions we have realized these are the areas to be focused fine then which of the following is referred as the processed data while solving the first question i have already shown you we will collect the raw data right and we will process the raw data to create some information this is the definition i have told you so what is the concept here before processing information is called as raw data after processing raw data is called as information fine so what they are asking which of the following referred, referred, referred to as processed data so processed data is nothing but information so information is the answer here if they want to twist the question next year before processing the information what do you call that information you can say raw facts or raw data fine then okay so these are the all the previous year questions that have been asked from information systems in the rrbje exam okay what are the questions we have uh, learned till now those are the questions that have been asked in information system that have been asked from information system in previous year rrbje examinations fine so after that as i have already shown you we understood from the introduction part they are interested in definitions different entities involved in the in, uh, introduction sorry information systems and different type of information systems then coming to e-commerce they are interested in what are the different categories that are involved in e-commerce and what are the advantages of e-commerce and what are the disadvantages of e-commerce fine so as per our strategy first let us uh, what is our strategy go through previous year questions understand the areas to be focused and collect the relevant content and practice so we have gone through the previous year questions in the previous slide i have already shown you what are the areas to be focused now what we will do i'll show you some relevant data related to this areas to be focused and we will practice those questions i hope this point uh, i hope this point is clear for you and i already told you out of these five topics these three topics can be covered in other subjects also hardware and software is covered in other subjects and communications is covered in data communication networks or computer networks or web technologies in the syllabus so i am not focusing on these three topics why because these three topics can be covered by other subjects also what are the content we learn in other subjects that will help you to answer basic questions from these topics this introduction and e-commerce has some unique content 
that is not being covered in any other subjects. That's why I'm focusing on introduction part and e-commerce part, part. Fine? Now, now, before going to the practice, let us learn some relevant content that is related to these information systems. Okay? If you see here, what was my uh, statement? After understanding the areas to be focused, what I did? Collect the relevant content and practice. So before practice, what I need to do? Let me explain you some relevant content that will give you the idea behind definition of information system and different entities involved in the information system and type of different types of information systems. Fine? So now we are going to discuss introduction part of the information system. See, see the definition of information system? A set of interrelated components that collect, manipulate, store, and disseminate data and information and provide a feedback mechanism to meet an objective. So how do, how do they make, the, make question from this thing? They just add ease and give dash. So they have given the definition of information system and they just add ease dash. If you know this exact definition, you can easily answer that the answer is information system. Fine? Then, information systems are everywhere. An air traveler checks in for flight using a, uh, using a kiosk which sends the check-in information into a uh, network to verify traveler's reservation and flight information. The terminal process, the terminal process, the information and prints boarding pass, speeding, uh, speeding airport check-in flight times. So what they are trying to say here, because of, because of the information systems, what are the check-in processes there in airline services that can be fast in? I'm repeating this point again. In this paragraph, what are they, what they are trying to say? Because of the information systems, we can fast the process. Not only in airline systems. If you want to book a movie ticket, there also you can involve uh, this information systems. If you want to transact the money, there also you can involve some money transaction app like Google Pay or G Phone Pay. So what they are trying to say here? They are trying to give the applications of information system. Here they have mentioned something like airline services. But you can recall all other uh, applications of information systems also. That is why you can uh, make a, a pure preparis, regress, so preparation regress. Fine? Then, as I already told you, what was the point I was telling you while solving the questions? We take some raw data and we will process it. We will create information. This was the definition I was telling you. Now, we will try to understand. We understand this process. Now, I will try to give you the glance. What do I mean by raw data and what do I mean by information? So, I am giving the definition of raw data and information. You understood something like after processing raw data becomes information. But till now, I didn't tell you the definition of raw data and definition of information, say information. So, here we are going to discuss the same thing, data. Raw facts such as an employee number, total, total hours worked in a week, inventory part, numbers or sales or orders. Here, we are not maintaining any structured thing. Okay? Here, we are not maintaining the information structured thing. We are just listing them. But coming to information, a collection of facts organized in such a way, see, see this word, organized in such a way. Here, the, the information, the raw facts are unorganized. When you organize this unorganized raw facts, then you can call it as information. They have additional value beyond the value of the individual facts. I'll tell you how it works. Let us say there are 20 students and 20 students got 20 different marks. If you want to assess the performance of the faculty who taught them, you cannot take any individual information. You have to take average of marks of all these 20 students, average of marks of all these 20 students. If the average is high, you can consider the faculty is performing well. My, I, ho I hope my point is clear. When you collect marks of the 20 students, it is data or raw facts. But when you calculate the average or aggregate of the information, then it will become information. Fine? So, collecting raw facts doesn't make it information. If you can derive some useful data out of that raw facts, then you can call the data as information. Hope this point is clear for you. I'm going to the next slide. Now, here we are interested in different types of data. So, we understood in the previous slide, we have understood What is the difference between information and data? Here, what I'm interested in, I'm trying to show what are the different types of data. If you see numbers, letters, and other characters, they are called alphanumeric data. They are called alphanumeric data. If you see graphic images or pictures, that will be called as image data. 
If you see sound, noise or tones, it will be called audio data. If you see moving images or pictures, that is video data. Even though they are looking very trivial, let me tell you. When they ask you some question like, let us say, if they say graphic images or pictures, you may mistaken that it is part of video data, but it is part of image data. Even though these are very trivial, you may commit mistakes. That's why I have listed these things here. What are the different types of, types of data? It can be alphanumeric data, image data, or audio data, or video data. So what do you consider as alphanumeric data? Numbers, letters, and other characters. What, do you, what, do, what will you consider as image data? It includes graphic images and pictures. What do you consider as audio data? It includes sounds, noise, and tones. What do you mean by video data? It includes moving images or pictures. Fine? And last year, or in the practice session, we will look at a question where they give some data, and they'll ask you to classify whether it is video data, or audio data, or image data, or alphanumeric data. Okay? Then, here, as I already told you, uh, I have told you many times that process data is information. Fine? Now, we are going to learn who, how we make this data as the information. Till now, we understood something like, we have some raw data, right? We process it, and we create some information. This is the thing we learn. Now, we are going to learn who makes this data as information. That is one thing. How we make this data? How we make this data as information? Okay. So this is the basic uh, big picture that we are learning. N later, what we have learned, we understood what is the difference between data and information. Then we understood what are the different types of data. Now we are going to learn how we convert data to information. Who converts data to information? These are the two things we are going to learn. How we convert and who converts it? Knowledge workers. Just understand this point are people who create, use, and disseminate knowledge and are usually professionals in science, engineering, and business and other areas. Just understand this point here. Here, knowledge workers are not computer science experts. They can be experts in physics, they can be experts in mathematics, they can be experts in sociology or ge geography or geometry or anything. They need not be specialists in computer science. They need not know how to handle information system. They just create the knowledge. They don't bother how information system process that knowledge. They need to have the domain knowledge of the subject. If you want to create a database of mathematics, you don't expect that knowledge worker to have knowledge of information systems. You just need to check whether these knowledge worker know maths or not. I'm repeating this point again. Knowledge workers doesn't know how to may not know how to handle information systems. What is the primary or essential quality they need to have? They need to have the knowledge of their particular domain. Hope this point is clear for you. So the key point you need to remember about knowledge workers, sir, they are not information system experts. They are experts in their own domain. Fine? Then, a knowledge management system is organized collection of people, procedures, software, database, and devices used to create, store, and use the organization's knowledge and experience. Just understand this here. Just understand the thing, he's, the thing here. I'm repeating, repeating this point again because this is very important. Here, knowledge workers are not computer science experts or information system specialist. They know the knowledge of their own subject. They help in converting data to information. Fine? So we have answered this question. Who convert data to information? The answer is knowledge workers. The answer is knowledge workers. Now I'll ask you one more question. Do knowledge workers need to have significant knowledge in information system? The answer is no. Knowledge workers need not to have knowledge about information systems. They just need to have knowledge about their own domain. They have to help in converting data to information. Fine? Then, defining and organizing relationship among data creates information. I already told you in the example, when you take the average of all the marks, you can assess the performance of the faculty. Right? In the same way, they are giving the same definition. What they are saying? A set of logically related tasks performed to achieve a defined outcome. Okay? In, the, in my example, we took the marks of 20 students and we took the average. Based on the average, we are evaluating the performance of the faculty. Knowledge. The awareness and understanding of a set of information and ways that information can be made useful to support a specific task or reach a destination. Decision. Sorry. Decision. So what we are trying to say, collecting so many raw facts doesn't help anything. Collecting so many raw facts doesn't help anything. If you organize the raw facts in a structured manner, then you can create some value out of that information. I hope this point is clear for you. Let us say, if you list out 
if you want to go for a trip or if you want to go for a movie, if you collect list of all the movie theaters, it doesn't help you. If you collect distance and list of the movie theaters, then you can decide which is the theater that is nearer to your place. Then you can go for that theater. I hope this point is clear for you. Collecting raw facts doesn't help in anything. If you collect the raw facts and organize that information in a structured manner, then you can get some value out of it. Fine? That is what they are uh, trying to say here. Let us go to the next slide. The characteristics of valuable information. Okay? If you see what was our flow, initially we understood there is something called data. We process this data and we will create information. Later we understood what is the definition of data and what is the definition of information. We also understood what are the different types of data involved like alphanumeric data, image data, uh, audio data and video data. Then I understood the definition of information. Now I am going to understand what are the salient features that made information different from data. What are the salient features that made the information different from data? And they may ask question like, which of the following is the salient feature of information? Or which of the following is not the salient feature of information? Like that. That's why I am trying to mention each and every feature of information. One is accessible. Second one is accurate, complete, economical, flexible, relevant, reliable, secure, simple, timely, verifiable, these things. Okay. What do I mean by accessible? If you create a hard disk and you did it, uh, hard disk of information and you kept the hard disk in a locker which can, no one can open, is there any advantage of it? What I am trying to say, if you create some information, if you are not giving access to that information to anyone, what is the use of creating that information? So what is the information that we are creating that should be accessible? You can maintain some secrecy, privacy and uh, access control, but it should be accessible to the people who want to make use of it. So the first point is accessible, fine? Then, second point is accurate. So you cannot give wrong information. The accuracy means correctness of the information. The user always expects the information to be accurate, fine? Then, complete. What do you mean by complete here? Let us say, if someone asks you, what is your name? Let us say, the name is Ram. If you just say RA, does it make any sense? It is incomplete information, fine? That is what they are trying to say here. Complete information contains all the important facts. Okay? If you miss some facts in the information, then it doesn't make any sense. Or it may, it may make wrong sense also. Let us say, if you want to say, don't do it. But you have excluded don't there. Because of this incomplete information, your intention is don't do it. But the actual message is do it. Hope this point is clear for you. If you give incomplete information, it may lead to some unnecessary confusions. Fine? Then, economical. So, let us say, see recently IPL has been launched by Geo Cinema, right? Okay? They, they have launched it for free. Even though you pay for the data pack, that is a different story. What I am trying to say here, how, do, how are they attracting the audience? Their strategy is very simple. They said, watch IPL for free on the Geo Cinema or watch IPL free on the Geo, C Geo TV. In this way, just by, making just by making it economical, they are attracting the audience. Hope this point is clear for you. When the information is economical, it can attract more audience. That is what I am trying to say here. Then, flexible. Flexible information can be used for variety of purposes. Fine. So, there is something called format of the information. Okay. See, if I give you a document, if you give you a PDF file, and if you want to add additional information, which, we, which, we, which one will you, you will prefer? Obviously, you will prefer documents. Even the PDF can be edited, but editing PDF involves additional tools. But editing document can be done with some generic tools also. So what I am trying to say here, if the information is modifiable or it can be used for multiple purposes, then information has more value. Fine? Relevant. Now, if you are preparing for RRB JE or any computer science subject or if you are from an engineering stream, then only my video can help you. Fine? If you are preparing for any other exam, where you don't need the knowledge of computer science, that is, that is impossible. Let me tell you why. Even if you are preparing for non-technical exams, in every exam, they are expecting some knowledge from computer science, basic knowledge of computer science. So let, us, let me give you some other example. 
being a computer science student you are not expected to have knowledge of physics right so whatever the knowledge that is being collected over the internet related to physics you may not be interested in okay whoever is from computer science they may be interested in my video whoever is from physics they may not be interested in my video because i am not teaching anything related to physics here so what do i mean by here even the information is valuable it is not valuable to everyone so relevancy is needed whoever feel relevant they will follow this content whoever feel relevant they don't follow this content hope this point is clear for you reliable what is the trustworthiness of the information what is the trustworthiness of the information so what do i mean by trustworthiness here have you ever used chat gpt it is a path breaking application but let me tell you something the chat gpt have information access till 2021 only so sometimes it is not giving accurate answers why because it doesn't know what has happened in 2022 or 2023 it doesn't have access to this information because of this lack of information sometimes sometimes it is giving inaccurate uh, outputs hope this point is clear for you why i have mentioned chat gpt here because here we are talking about reliability even though chat gpt is a very good application since it has its own drawbacks what is the drawback it doesn't have access to the information after 2020 2021 so whatever the activities that has happened after 2021 it doesn't know because of this reason sometimes we cannot rely on the chat gpt application i hope my example is clear, clear for this uh, feature of the information let us go to the next feature secure okay it should be accessible that uh, that is true but if you want to make your system more uh, information more accurate uh unreliable you need to maintain the security also let us say if you have given right access to everyone they may wrong right your correct information with wrong information it may cause issues so what i'm trying to say say here even though accessibility is needed and reliability is needed and relevancy is needed we need to make the information in a secured manner otherwise the people with malicious intention may overwrite your content and they may mislead the users fine simple information should be simple not overly complex sophisticated and detailed information might not be needed in fact too much information can cause information overload whereby a decision maker has too much information and is unable to determine what is really important here let me tell you how my strategy is relevant to this simple part if you see what was the strategy i am mentioning go to the previous year questions this was my first statement the second statement i understand uh, i was telling you areas to be focused this is the second point i want you to understand areas to be focused what are the questions that they are asking in the exam then the third statement what i am saying that is practice look at the second step if you don't follow the second step you will learn so much content which is not relevant to the rrbje preparation okay so what i'm trying to say here if you make your if you want to make your preparation simple you need to understand what is the content that is relevant to our preparation here our rrbje ace academy course will help you because we have gone through all the previous year questions we have understood what are the areas to be focused and we made our content that it will help you to prepare for the rrbje exam fine since we have done these two tasks like we have gone through the previous three questions we have understood areas to be focused now you can follow this content and you can make practice of that content if you take our course these two tasks will be done by us only because we have gone through the previous three questions we have made our content based on the strategy so we are focusing on the content that is relevant to exam and that uh, we we have focused our content such that expected questions will be covered in this content so if this task is done by the faculty of as what is the advantage you can make practice on that content fine so other features are timely and verifiable the information should be verifiable so here i'll i'll give you the definition of information system what is the definition of inform information system it will have some input it will process the information will create some output now after getting the output we will take some we will give some feedback to the input okay i got this output but i want to enhance the output so this output section will give the feedback to input section okay now i got some output called 
let me erase the ink here. X1, I am giving you some feedback. Let us enhance the input and give the next output X2. It works like this, okay? So, my point is very clear. For any exam, your preparation should be like this. Just go through the previous year questions, understand the areas to be focused, and collect the relevant content and practice those questions. So here, what I have done, I have shown you five topics in the syllabus. That is in introduction, hardware, software, communications, and uh, e-commerce. And I already told you, hardware, software, and communications can be covered in other subjects also. So what I told you, I asked you to go through the previous year questions and collect what are the questions coming from introduction part and what are the questions coming from e-commerce part. Then what we have understood? In the introduction part, they are interested in definitions and entities involved in the information system. Here I have shown you entities involved in the information system. What are the entities? Input section, processing, output section and feedback. And what are the different types of information systems? So these are the things you need to learn from introduction part. And what is the other part you need to learn from information system? That is e-commerce. Here, what are the different types of e-commerce? That is B2B, B2C, all these things. And what are the advantages of e-commerce? What are the disadvantages of e-commerce? Okay. So since the session is for limited time, I gave you the glance of the topics need to be covered. Okay. Since I cannot continue the sessions for more time, since we are limited, uh, limited with the one hour time. Now I have given you the glance of topics to be covered. If you take our course from RRB, uh, uh, RRBJ course from AS Academy, you can find all this content at one place. This is a one-stop solution, okay? Otherwise, you understood the list of topics that need to be learned. You can search from any other source. But if you take our course, it will help you to enhance your preparation or fasten your preparation. Hope this session helps you what to study from this information systems. And my point is very simple. Even the information system is specific to computer science student. Because of the genericness and applications of the information system, it is relevant to all the computer science students and non-computer science students also. Okay? So I hope this uh, gives the list of topics that, uh, that need to be learned from this subject. Uh, I, uh, this, I, I hope this session is helpful for you. Thank you.